Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, what have I got for you lovely people today? Well, it's going to be one of those spontaneous, have a splash around, see where the paint takes you type of tutorial. So we're going to be painting this lovely little misty lake with a rowing boat. And I'm also going to be reviewing a brand of paint that I've never tried before. So come and join me and we'll paint this step by step together. Okay, so today we have another paint review. Now, for those of you who have seen my video on watercolour paints, you'll know that there are a few big brands that I've not tried yet. And Marame Bleu from Italy is one of those. Now, I know that Jenna Rainey on her channel has gone over to using them exclusively, so I'm sure they're going to be great. So I bought this introductory set of five colours in 12 mil tubes. It was just under 40 UK pounds. So at eight pound a tube, that's fairly reasonable. Now they're all single pigment colors and include Quinacridone Lake, Ultramarine Deep, Payne's Gray, Green Gold and Cadmium Yellow Deep. So when I'm trying out a new brand, I like to use these fairly inexpensive palettes from Magello just to keep everything nicely together. So I had a good play around with them. And I have to say, I'm very impressed. They re-wet very well. The single pigments are strong and vibrant. The ultramarine granulates beautifully. And they do all the things a good professional watercolor should do. Now, my only criticism is the choice of colours in this introductory set. Now, you get both a warm blue in the ultramarine and a warm yellow in the cadmium yellow. So you won't get any of those lovely, vibrant, cool greens. Now, I see from their range that they do a cadmium yellow lemon, which perhaps might have been a better option. So you'll certainly need to add a few extra colours if you're going to continue with these as a set. Now the green gold is quite an interesting colour too. Again, it's very warm, slightly moving over towards the brownish colour. Now, especially when you compare it with the Daniel Smith's green gold, which is much more green. Okay, so for today's materials, my paper I'm using today is some Saunders Waterford. It's a rough texture, 100% cotton, 140 pound. It's on a block, so it won't need stretching, but any decent watercolour paper will do. So the colours I'm using from the range are the basic primaries, Cadmium Yellow Deep, Quinacridone Lake, Ultramarine Deep and Payne's Grey, but you could use a Cobalt Blue or a Nelizarin Crimson, and just a standard Cadmium Yellow would work fine. And all the brushes from my range, a mop, three quarter inch flat, number 12 and number six round, and my trusty number three rigger. Right, so this is a print of a painting that I did quite a few years ago, and I've always quite liked it, but felt it was lacking a bit of interest or perhaps a focal point. So I saw this picture on Pixabay and thought, well, perhaps we could combine these two. So a very simple sketch, so no drawing template this week. Off we go! Using my mop, I'm wetting all the area above the waterline with clean water. Then a very light touch of the yellow. And then some ultramarine. Now the only colour that I've added to the set is just a little touch of cerulean blue. Now I've added into the blue a little amount of the Quinacridone Lake just to get a slight purplish feel. And here is about a 50-50 mix of the Quinacridone Lake and the Cadmium Yellow Deep. 
everything going on nice and quickly, wet and wet. Let those colours mix on the paper. So splattering in colour is a great way to get paint into your wash without disturbing what you've already painted. still all very wet so I can clean my brush off and lift out a few lighter areas. Again drying off then lifting out these shafts of light. And I'm just splattering in here both warm and cool tones. And as usual, a few dollops of clean water to force a few back runs. So next I want to layer some suggestions of trees on top of the first washes. Now I use the dry brush technique here, keeping the brush flat to the paper. And this is a mix of 50% ultramarine and 50% Payne's Grey. And here I've just simply added a little quinacridone lake into the mix. Now I'm really trying not to make things look too defined with lots of hard edges. So I'm spraying with a little water to soften just a little touch. And now with my rigger for some very loose trunks and branches. And because I sprayed it first, I'm getting some nice fuzzy effects. And as I move over to the light, I'm warming and lightening the colours just to help with that sense of light coming from the middle. Now here is the Cadmium Yellow Deep with a touch of the Quinacridone Lake. Now, as I often say, the rigger brush is perfect for these loose trees. It's so springy and just goes where it wants, which always helps to make things look more natural. And I'm doing exactly the same this side, perhaps a little less as this bank is slightly further away. So next, let it totally dry. 
and then I'm going to be wetting the entire lake area with clean water over the boat everything now I'm just using my flat brush here and just replicating all the colors and values to what is above making sure I get that sense of light in the middle now I keep tilting my board to an angle of about 45 degrees to keep the paint moving downwards now don't worry if you don't match the colors exactly as long as the strength of the values is similar it's always going to work if you find things are drying too quickly then give it a quick spray Now if you also find you're losing some of the light, simply dry your brush off and lift out the paint. This will always work all the time your washes are still wet. Here I'm even dropping in some dollops of clean water and just letting it run down. Oh, there's an annoying loose bristle just behind the boat there. We'll have to get rid of that later. It's also worth mentioning that I'm using 100% cotton paper. Now, it does stay wet a lot longer than the cheaper pulp-based papers. So if you find that your wet and wet blends are just drying too quickly, cotton paper may be the answer. So while still damp, I'm going to sprinkle in a little table salt into the corner here, but very sparingly, not great big clumps of it, much less than you'd put on your fries. Now here with my number six brush, I'm lightly tapping in some clean water to create a softer, more motley effect than what you'd get with the salt. And here just splattering in a mix of the ultramarine and Payne's Grey. Right, so now we need to let this totally dry. So, it's a perfect time for a short break. And because I'm trying to do a dry January, just a nice cup of herbal tea. Now dry, you can see the effects created by the salt and that splattered water. But I would say that this is a classic example of the ugly stage all paintings go through. It all looks a bit of a mess at the moment. So, up here I've lost more definition than I was hoping, as I've probably used slightly more spray than I should have. So I'm going back in again to retrieve some of that detail. But, I do want this to look a nice misty background, so I'm keeping it fairly simple. And I'm using all the same colours as previous.
Okay, so it's now time for the little boat. And I've got to say, they've got to be the biggest oars I've ever seen. They're twice the size of George here, who's rowing it. So I start with a light wash over the entire boat. And here I'm just dabbing out a little light with a tissue. Now once totally dry, I'm coming back in with a much thicker consistency of the same colour. I'm not sure what George is doing out here. Could be fishing or just a little leisure trip. Anyway, of course it's important that you get this reflection to help locate the boat on the water. Now for the little duck, or possibly a cormorant. And again, the reflection is vital. So this area here is a little confusing, so I'm going to turn it into a little reed bed with a very dark value. Same colour again, but needs to be very strong. And my rigger here for the reeds is the perfect brush. and a few more small details in the bank. Next, now, as the title of the video suggested, I want this to be a misty lake and I have far too many hard edges. So this stage is very important and it's one of my favorite techniques of softening and blending with a damp tissue. Now, you don't want to overdo it but you can really achieve that misty effect by softly rubbing the paint. Now non-staining colours like blues will lift out much easier than a lot of the yellows. And it's great for that textured effect on rough or cold pressed paper. Now it's exactly how I got the effect of water being disturbed by a light breeze on this original. So I'm using a plastic ruler as a guide and simply rubbing across. And here with a damp brush, painting clean water repeatedly back and forth and then lifting out with a tissue.
And finally, a white pastel pencil is great for adding in those final highlights. And you could also use a white watercolour pencil, but I find that they're not quite as opaque as a pastel pencil. There we go, all done. And the first time I've signed 2023. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. Just have a really good old splash around with the paint, see where it takes you. Don't put any pressure on yourself to paint a masterpiece every time. Just have fun. And of course, please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment. I do read every single one. And of course, I look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. Take care now, everyone. 